Okay, uh, simula na tayo ng ating lecture today. At uh, as I promised, this is a lecture on the societal problems. No? If we go back doon sa ating previous lecture, yung last slide, you know, it was mentioned there how the Industrial Revolution created some of the early successes in terms of development ng industry, agriculture in particular also. Tapos, uh, nagkaroon ng rapid changes sa pagkakaroon ng mga cities. No? And it affected the rural areas whereas yung mga tao na displaced no? kasi pumasok na yung mga feudalism kung saan uh, the wealthy people took over the land at sila yung nagpatakbo ng uh, crop production, animal production, agriculture in particular. At yung mga laborer ay na-displaced because during the Industrial Revolution na uh, invento na yung mga machines, you know, factories. At yung factories na gumagamit ng mga raw materials kailangan din ng mga operators. So nakita no mga nahihirapan na sa rural areas particularly in farming na there is work in the city. So they go to the city. Then while many people's lives were improving, the industrial revolution also birthed ng anak ng maraming mga societal problems. Societal meaning mga tao ito, no. Can you imagine that uh, too many people in the city na dati ay andun spread sa rural areas. And if you look here, meron ditong lumang-luma na, na uh, this is a, a propaganda. No? Sabi, thief, magnanakaw. The worst thief is he who steals the playtime of children. Ang pinakagrabe o pinakamatindi raw magnanakaw ay yung mga tao na inaagaw ang mga playtime, yung oras ng paglalaro sa mga bata ay nawawala sapagkat sila ay pinapagtrabaho na sa mga factories no as early as maybe 10 years old or even younger no pwede noon no walang walang human rights noon para walang walang mga protection ng mga bata noon so ang nangyayari because uh, mahirap nga, even children has to work, no? There were inequalities in the system. So, mayaman mahirap. Owners amassed vast fortunes while laborers, including young children, toiled for long hours in unsafe conditions. Workers' rights, wage protection, and safe work environments are issues that arose during this period and remain concerns today. Hanggang ngayon, yan pa rin. No? Mabuti na lang itong mga sa mga bata. Medyo na limitahan na yung uh, bata pa lang pinapagtrabaho na. So ngayon, yan ay na-address na natin. The post-industrial societies and the information age. So moving forward tayo pagkatapos na ng industrial societies at sa panahong ito, yung tinatawag na information age, you know, the post-industrial societies, also known as information societies, yung pagkatapos ng industrial, ngayon ay information, kaalaman. No? Uh, yesterday and other nights, ano, natuwa akong bumili ng mga e-books. No? Can you imagine, uh, merong 30, 30 volumes, na halos nga hindi ko na matapos buklatin, ha? 30 volumes ng mga agricultural books ha books talaga siya mabibili mo lang online ipapadala sa iyo uh, sa Google Drive nila you can log in and download as many as you want no kung ayaw mo lang mag-download ay di open mo lang siya ron for only 149 pesos 25 titles tapos meron po ring pag nalamang mahilig kang bumili meron na namang mag-appear sa iyo na magbebenta. Ganun din, no? Uh, this time naman, tungkol naman sa um, 
uh, entrepreneurship. Ito medyo konti lang yung books, parang mga 10 lang. Pero ang gaganda ng mga books, ano? for only around 99 pesos. Yung kanina, merong akahapon, merong pang nabili ako. Tungkol naman siya sa self-help, no? self-improvement. At uh, ganoon din, almost 200 pesos. So, ito na yung information age. No? There will be no reason for people na hindi nila alam ang mga bagay-bagay. All you need to do is to uh, walk your fingers, kaliri mo lang, pindot open, and then you will have the information. One of the most valuable goods of the modern era is information. Those who have the means to produce, store, and disseminate information are leaders in, the, in this type of society. Pati sa election ngayon, ano, bawal na nga kasi yung face-to-face -face na kampanya. Although may nakikita ako nagmo-motor kid na nagpo-post na ngayon. Ngayon pa lang, wala bawal pa yun. Uh, pero ang pinaglalabanan ngayon is through the social media. Uh, information as well as disinformation. So meron mga tinasabing trolls, tagapagpakalat ng may bad news. Meron kung minsan din naman good news para la ang ma-highlight yung isang kandidato. So this is the uh, information era. Now balikan natin ano. Itong mga klase ng societies, ano. One way scholars understand the development of different types of societies like agricultural, industrial and post-industrial is by examining their economies in terms of four sectors, no? eto madalang nyo na sigurong marinig itong mga last three sectors because we are used to the first term primary, secondary, and tertiary, no? Uh, parang sa education. Pero meron pang dalawang term na ginamit which is we are not uh, particularly familiar is quaternary. So primary is one, secondary is two, tertiary is three, and then the fourth is quaternary. And the pip is hinari, or hinari, right? So yan yung mga uh, klase ng societies. Tingnan natin kung ano-ano itong mga societies na ito. So it uh, has different focus. No? The primary sector extracts and produces raw materials. Meaning, kung babalikan natin yung time na pinag-uusapan natin, which is uh, after the Industrial Revolution, maraming mga trabahador, maraming mga naghahanap buhay ay nag-fall doon sa primary uh, sector, which is ito yung extraction of natural resources. Nagmimina nagpa-farm or forestry, kumukuha ng mga uh, lumber or timber sa gubat. No? And then you have the secondary. The secondary turns those raw materials into finished goods. So pinaprocess. So making things either by manufacturing or construction. Example, yan, Nissan car or Toyota yun na yung manufacturing. Then, the tertiary sector provides services. This type of industry provides services which includes shops. At dito na ngayon, kung mapapansin nyo, marami nang nag-engage. In fact, doon sa contribution sa ating gross domestic, pro domestic product, maraming mga napuproduce na goods and services ay na dito sa tertiary. At, at ang mga tao, maraming dito na nagtatrabaho, taking away the primary, the work in the primary sector. Ano-ano ba ito? These are uh, professionals, lalo na ngayon, na uh, free education, marami nakaka-graduate, so they become professionals. The social, which are the school teacher, and entertainment, personal, hairdressers, ano? sa restaurants sinama yung uh, yung restaurant sinama sa entertainment kasi na entertain kang kumain so hindi lang talaga food kundi the ambiance no so diyan na napupunta ngayon ang karamihan ng mga nagtatrabaho sa tertiary and then you have the 
quaternary. Well, quaternary. This is new sector is linked to uh, ICT and research development, genetic researchers, yung mga ganyan. Information and communication technology. So, marami ng uh, estudyante tayo ngayon na nasa IT. And uh, ako, ay minsan sounds uh, foreign to me, mga pinag-uusapan sa IT. Only at the application ko naiintindihan, but looking uh, deeper, di ko na naiintindihan yung mga bagay-bagay na yan. So, but there are people who engage at saka dyan talaga sila nakatutok. Ano? Uh, kasama din yan ang mga research no? and new technologies dyan dinidevelop. The management of information in society's highest levels of education and the arts. And then you have the, the kinari, no? yung huli, pang lima. The latest addition to focus on high-level economic and social through responsible institutions. The professions of the people working in this industry are generally referred to as gold collar. So meron kayong blue collar, may white collar. Ito na yung pinakamataas na antas, the gold collar. Mga, mga genius siguro ito. Profession since the services included in the sector focus on interpretation of existing or the new ideas, evaluation of new technologies, and the creation of services. So ito yung mga nag-iisip ng bagong pamamaraan. Uh, they promote uh, the new technology in terms of how are we going to do things. Kung narinig nyo, at baka nakapag-invest kayo ng mga bitcoins. No? Uh, mahirap lang i-discuss yan. Napakahaba. No? Uh, the first time I heard that is in 2018 when I was still at De La Salle, uh, yung aking PhD. First time ko na rin dyan bitcoin. At ako pa naman ang na, ano, na-sign na mag-report sa klase tungkol dyan sa bitcoin. As well as... Uh, Uh, chain block na kung narinig na yung chain block uh, later on gagawa ko ng separate uh, video for that chain block or blockchain ano ba ang tama doon blockchain, it's not chain block chain block yung pangangat ng, ng mga mababigat at, uh, blockchain no? na i-report ko rin yan. Uh, noong nire-report ko, eh, walang nakakaintindi. Kahit ako hindi ko naintindihan. Only my professor ang nakakaintindi ng blockchain na yan. And bitcoins. At ang bitcoin ngayon, um, meron ng bagong laro sa kung saan pwede kang makonvert sa bitcoin yung kinikita mo. No? Axi. No? Uh, siguro, ilan sa inyo naglalaro niya. Yung dalawang anak ko naglalaro rin. And they yung bunso uh, is earning something like 1,000 per week. Okay na sa kanya. Yung panganay ko naman, ano na siya, nag scholar na siya. Mas malaki pa raw ang kanyang kinikita kaysa sa kanyang salary sa pagtuturo. No? Uh, these are things na bago sa atin. No? Baka ito'y kasama doon sa uh, kinari. Sila na yung mga nag-iisip ng bagong pamamaraan. So, these are the sectors of industry. Lima, lima yan. Dito, aapat lang napakita ko. Kasi nung makita ko itong picture na ito, hindi pa lumalabas yung pang lima. So, going back again, doon sa first sector natin, uh, these are primary sector included farming, fishing, mining, and forestry. The sad thing, kung titingnan natin, these are the poorest of the poor. Especially farming and fishing. Sila yung mahihirap, no? Mining industry, bukod sa mahirap din ang sweldo dyan, napakahirap din ang kondisyon you know, because they are working underground. But they, we could not take away the mining industry, especially yung sa power generation like yung coal. Ano. Uh, merong balibalita ngayon that uh, China is experiencing power disruption nagkukulang na ang kanilang power kaya maraming mga industry sa, sa kanila ang hirap na hirap ngayon because kulang sila sa kuryente. The reason is that nagkaroon ng matitinding pag-ulan sa China for several months. No? Baha, kung nakikita nyo sa, sa, sa YouTube, talagang grabe ang baha. No? Uh, hindi kalsada but the entire 
sometimes the entire town or the entire province ng ng China ay binabaha including the mining industry. So noong bahain, siyempre, unang pupuntahan ng tubig yung malalalim. Eh, alam mo naman ng mining ay talagang maghuhukay ka ng malalim. Sila yung pinuntahan ng tubig, kaya hindi sila makapagmina ngayon. The result is that wala silang magamit na coal na panggatong para sa kanilang mga industry kasi hindi pa lahat ay nakakagawa ng nuclear power. No? So, asa pa rin sila sa coal. Kung sila ay eh, mag import ng coal sa Australia, kulang pa rin. At saka nagkakagalit sila ngayon. So, they are experiencing uh, power uh, problems ang China. So, importante yung mining. Forestry. Forestry, maganda because um, because of the lumber, the timber that uh, are produced for commercial use, mga bahay, furniture, etc. There are several ways na uh, magagamit ang wood but the sad thing is that kapag ka na over harvest mo naman yan, uh, yan ang bawi. Kaya nga, the, the mother nature has a way of uh, exacting revenge. You know? Ayan, sa China, siyempre, nagputol din sila ng puno dyan, even here in the Philippines. Uh, even in Benguet, mayroon kaming pinupuntahan doon na uh, strawberry farm. Uh, the last uh, time na dumaan yung bagyong si Maring ay submerged talaga. I imagine sa bundok yun. Ah. Benguet is a high elevation uh, na lugar, pero binaha. Ako talagang uh, sabi nung kaibigan ko doon sa Benguet State University, first time na yung kanilang mismong building ay inabot ng baha. Uh, binabaha sila before but not that, that high. No? Second natin is the secondary. You know? Ito yung mga economy uh, na nagpo-proseso. So, industrial. Manufacturing. And then the third sector, service. Okay? Yan. Nabanggit ko na naman kanina. In the United States, for example, almost 80% of the workforce is employed in the tertiary sector. Dito naman sa Pilipinas, napakarami na rin. Uh, even you, siguro, pagka-graduate nyo, you will be, uh, some of you will be here. Transport, advertising, retail, teaching, healthcare, hotel, etc. No, mas gusto niya kaysa mag-bukid, siguro, mag-farming. Uh, in, in the past, in old times, ano, meron ding societal hierarchy at uh, sinagamit nating sample ay sa Egypt, no? Tandang practice na pala taga, talaga ito. Bata pa ang, ang, uh, sa, ang, ang society ay meron ng hierarchy. Like in this case, yung pinaka mababang klase are called farmers. Bakit ba laging si farmers na sa ilalim? <laughs> Hindi ba pwedeng si farmer ay nasa ibabaw? Servants, mga katulong at matindi slaves, mga alipin. No? So most Egyptians were farmers. Below them were servants and slaves. Kawa-awa yung mga slaves. They have no property. They have no... Uh, hindi nila, nila pag-aari ang sarili na. They were owned by somebody. By, by other people. Pag-aari sila. So wala silang rights. No? Kung ano lang ang gusto ang ipagawa sa kanila ng kanilang amo. Because sila ay alipin. Slaves. No? They are... Kung titingnan natin, they are not humans sa pakiramdam nila. Dahil hindi sila, wala silang kalayaan, wala silang freedom. They are sunod-sunuran and mostly they are uh, assigned doon sa mga trabahong hard labor. And then sumunod sa kanila, yung medyo uh, mataas-taas ng antas are called scribes, taga-sulat, no? and crafts people, yung magagaling na sa mga art. No? Uh, yan, na naha-hire na. No? So, hindi na sila alipin. Hindi na sila the, the lowest of the rank. Ano? And then you have the nobles. Naku, ito na yung mga officials na panahon ng payro, priest, at saka yung mga government employees nila. And you have then the highest, which is the payro, the king. The payro ruled Egypt as a ah, god. No? Ang tingin sa kanila ay Diyos. And even after their death, 
they were given the the best uh, kaya nga parang triangle yan ano kung makikita niyo mga pyramids uh, they were believed to be the monument of Pharaoh at um, sabi ginawa daw living yan kaya lang during to mga pag pag uh, ano nila uh, excavation eh wala namang makita ng ano roon wala namang makita ng nilibing but uh, they believe they are built for something something else no? But going back again to information technology, you know, the rapid increase in the computer use in all aspects of daily life is a main reason for the transition to an information economy. Fewer people are needed to work in factories because computerized robots now handle many of the tasks. You know? At dati, bata-bata pa ko, ang robot ay pan-sitting, you know? laruan, panood sa pelikula, you know? sa animation or cartoons. Yung mga robots, Voltes 5, yan. Mga robots yan. And those are mga hindi totoo during that time. But this time, they are already here. No? Uh, pero ang robot ngayon ay designed to manufacture like this one. No? Kung, uh, one time, I'll show you a video ng how robots are making cars you know it's a picture lang to and uh, meron akong uh, isang napanood din you know? I, I don't know if you are familiar with uh, ay Elon Musk no ito yung mayamang tao ngayon sa America na iba na ang kanyang ano pinaglalaruan spaceship going to Mars uh, tapos yung kanyang mga rocket ship na ginagamit ay pwedeng ma-reuse kasi pwede silang luma mag-landing back again sa, sa Earth. You know? Dati kasi pag nagamit na yung mga fuselage, yung, ay papatak na lang siya going back to Earth or masusunod sa space. You know? Pero sa kanya, para makasave, pwedeng i-reuse, pwedeng makabalik. You know? At sabi niya, Uh, ito, baka matawa kayo sa kwento niya, pero I think this is, he is serious. Ano? Plano nila, plano na ng tropa ni Elon Musk ano, with, with NASA ano, na magpadala na ng tao sa Mars. Bakit naman? Bakit naman pupunta ang tao doon sa Mars? Ay, wala rin naman oxygen doon. Hindi sa katulad sa Earth. Ano? Ang unang napadala lang ngayon are yung kanilang mga rover. Ano? We, we could, it's good actually landed there ano, at uh, siya ay nakakakuha na ng mga video, pictures. Ang plano daw in the future is to build um, base, human base doon sa uh, Mars. Sabi, sino magtatayo ng ano roon? Sino magtatayo ng building doon? Titirahan ng, ng humans. Ano? Sabi niya, No, ano na plano na namin yan. We will be sending robots who are intelligent, who could make uh, the facilities. Ay eh, ganun karaming robot ang kailangan mo. Sabi niya, just a few. Because the robots, the robots will in turn create another robot. Kaya niyang mag-build ng one of its kind, yung katulad niya. No, parang nanganganak yan. Hindi nga lang pinanganak, kundi they could make their own. No? Tapos ang kukuha sila ng ano? Saan sila kukuha ng bakal? Saan sila kukuha ng mga elements, minerals para gamitin sa structure? Sabi niya, eh, yun na nga ang aming pinuntahan doon. Tinitingnan namin ang composition ng Mars. At pwede kasing doon na kukuha niya ng mga minerals na kakailanganin. Wow! doon na gagamitin. So, ano na nga yan? Uh, napupuntahan na ng human uh, human robots din yung dumating doon. Nag-scan na sila. So, bakit napupunta doon ang mga tao? Sabi niya, hindi naman lahat pupunta. Only those uh, who are selected. Because ito raw ang insurance ng Earth o ng humankind, ng human race. Dahil natatakot siya na ang human would one day become extinct, mawala, mamatay, maubos. Because probably, ng mga nangyayari ngayon, probably ay pwedeng sasakit, maubos, o yung mga virus-virus, 
pwedeng because of global uh, war, nuclear, or something like uh, yung climate change ay magbago na talaga, baka maging ice age at mauubos ang tao. So ang plano ng Elon Musk is to bring people there in the space, outer space, probably sa Mars, at doon sila muna titira hanggang hindi pwedeng bumalik sa Earth or probably doon na sila nabuhay. Yun daw ang insurance, according to Elon Musk. Ganun na kahaba ang nangyari at baka hindi kayo familiar dyan. Now we have another term here, outsourcing, you know. Other manufacturing jobs have been outsourced to less developed countries as a result of the developing global economy. Nakikita nyo rito at ang Pilipinas ay isa sa mga leading countries na nag-host nitong outsourcing. Uh, previously, India ang pinakamadami sa outsourcing. No? Ito yung mga trabaho sa gabi. Kasi ang kinikita nila are normally sa US. Ano? <coughs> At ngayon, number one ang Philippines sa outsourcing. Uh, kinukuha natin yung mga trabaho na sa US, like mga encoding, tagasagot, yung inquiry, no? uh, two countries, India and the Philippines. Why, why do these two countries? Kasi ang India is also English-speaking. Ano? Pero mahalata mo kanilang um, intonations, you know? that they are Indians. The Filipinos, they could be like parrots, you know. They could actually copy the the lang the, the intonations of kung sino man ang kausap nila. Hindi mo na mahalata, no. Pero ako na kausap dati. Uh, habi niya gulat siya. Yung kausap daw niya sa kabilang linya ay pala si basketball player, NBA player Shaquille O'Neal, you know. <laughs> Shaquille pala yung kausap ko here in the Philippines, you know. So ito yung ngayon ang uh, isa sa mga bumubuhay din sa Pilipinas. Bakit ginagawa ito? Because if uh, those uh, repetitive wo works na pagsagot, pag-encode, pag-ayos ng records ay gagawin mismo sa US, no? then companies would be paying maybe double or triple the amount kung ang gagawa ipapasa mo nila dito sa mga developing countries like the Philippines, makakatipid sila. Kakunti lang ang papasweldohin nilang regular employees at at a lesser cost with effective uh, result. No? So, ganyan na nangyari. Accounting yan. Okay. So, we are now here on the di digital age. You know? It's raining hard here right now. Kaya may naririnig kayo ng sound sa labas. The growth of the internet has created industries that exist almost entirely online. Within industries, technology continues to change how goods are produced. For instance, the music and the film industries used to produce physical products like CDs and DVDs for distribution. Now, those goods are increasingly produced digitally and streamed or downloaded at much lower physical manufacturing costs. Information and the means to use it creatively have become commodities in a post-industrial economy. Binebenta na like uh, what I told you earlier, marami na mga books ngayon. E-books are being sold at a very, very uh, minimal cost. Now let's look at the, the type of, we call it uh, economic system, you know. Uh, tinignan natin ang mga societies, ano, yung mga naging problema nila. Let's look at the capitalism. Ano. Capitalism as an economic system in which there is private ownership ano, as opposed to state ownership. Yung state ownership, pag-aari lahat ng gobyerno like uh, in China, ano, those are uh, uh, communist countries, they are owned by the government. But sa capitalism, individuals or private ownership and where there is an impetus to produce profit, merong layunin na kumita ng pera and thereby wealth. This is the type of economy in place in the United States today. Also in the Philippines and other countries. Other capitalism people invest capital 
money or property invested in a business venture, in a business to produce a product or service that can be sold in a market to consumers. Okay, babalikan natin yan mamaya. Investors in capitalism, the investors in the company are generally entitled to a share of any profit. So yung nagtayo ng negosyo, called investors, ay may kahati kasi nga ang uh, impetus, ang uh, goal is to create profit made on sales after the cost of production, tinanggal mo yung gastos mo, and distribution uh, sa pag-deliver, tinanggal din, are taken out. These investors often invest their profits to improve and expand the business or acquire new ones. So yung kinikita nila, ibabalik probably nila uli sa kanila ang business para makapag-create uli ng expansion, lumaki ang business at at the same time yung kanilang profit lalaki rin, including their shares. Illustration of investment earnings. To illustrate how this works, consider this. Uh, Sara, Antonio, and Chris each invest $250,000 into a startup company. Bago pa lang ito na kumpanya, no? that offers an innovative baby product where the company nets data ng isang million in profits, one million dollar in first year, a portion of that profit goes back to Sarah, Antonio, and Chris, the sa tatlong incorporator, as a return of their investment, as mga investors. Sarah invest with the same company to fund the development of a second product line. Antonio uses this his return to help another startup in the technology sector. Nagtayo siya ng bagong negosyo at si Chris naman ay nagbakasyon. Dumili siya ng yate. Because they can do whatever they want to sa kanilang share. What it needs to produce products and services. No? That to provide their products or service owners hire workers to, to whom they pay wages. So ito na. Mga trabador na. The cost of raw materials and the retail price they charge consumers and the amount they pay in wages are determined through the law of supply and demand by the competition. Example natin ngayon, yung law of supply and demand sa labor. No? Uh, ngayon, in demand na in demand ang mga health workers, particularly ang mga nurses. Kaya lamang, hindi lang sa Pilipinas siya sa kailangan. Around the world, US in particular, Marami na ang mga nurses natin at uma, umaaray na mga hospitals na kulang na sila ng staff because many of them resign and goes abroad. Doon sila magtatrabaho ngayon kasi maybe triple the salary with a very good uh, uh, future na doon na sila mag-reside probably in U.S. or Europe. Kaya law of supply and demand yan. Siyempre, mamamagnet ma yung mga mga nurse na pumunta roon, pareho lang ng hirap, pareho ng risk. Eh, dito na kami sa malaki ang sweldo. Ganun talaga. No? Kasi hindi mo nang po pwedeng tigilan ng mga yan. These are the rights, human rights of workers. When demand exceed, exceed supply, prices tend to rise. At ito ay na uh, pag-aralan niyo sa economics. Ano? Kulang ang supply, tataas presyo. Pag sobra supply, pabaksak ang presyo. When multiple businesses markets similar products and services to the same buyer, there is competition. Labanan. <coughs> competition can be good for consumers because it can lead to lower prices and higher quality as businesses try to get customers consumers consumers to buy from them rather than from their competitors. Sample natin sa mga telcos. Uh, kasi ano lang naman, Smart and Globe ang naglalaban dyan at saka meron pang isang third player. <coughs> Tatatlo sila. So, uh, nag-uusap sila na para para walang ano, uh, sila sila lang kikita. No? Ang ginawa ng government, nagpapasok sila ng mga new players para magkaroon ng business com business competition bumaba ang presyo at bumilis ang internet no so magi-improve dapat sila 
uh, to beat the competition at ang primary na ma benefits uh, is a lower cost and good services is the consumer. Workers' wages naman tend to be set in a similar way. People who have talent, skills, education, or training that is short in is in short supply and is needed by businesses tends to earn more. So ito ang ano, payo ko sa inyo. No? If you want to earn more, hanapin nyo yung trabaho. Doon kayo, yun ang pag-aralan nyo. Yung trabaho na kukunti ang competition. Because ganyan din, meron din law of supply and demand. Uh, baka nga lang mahal ang education dyan, pero... Ganun talaga, it's an investment. At kung kukunti uh, nakakaalam niyan or special skills, chances are mas malalaki ang bayad dyan. In times when many people... Ay, mamaya. Uh, in times when many people are in unemployed and jobs are scarce, people are often willing to accept less than they would when their services are in high demand. In this scenario, businesses are able to maintain or increase profits by not increasing workers' wages. Capitalism in practice naman tayo. Ano oras na ba? As capitalists began to dominate the economies of many countries during the Industrial Revolution, the rapid growth of businesses and their tremendous profitability gave some owners the capital they needed to create enormous corporations that could monopolize an entire industry. You know? So kung titignan natin noon do sa uh, hierarchy, ng society, meron talagang nasa taas ng triangulo yung mga mayayaman. At sila rin ang uh, player dito sa capitalism. They have the money. You know? So sila makakapagtayo nito mga big businesses na hindi kayang itayo ng mga simple people like uh, power. Meralco, yung power distribution. Meralco. Kaya nga na-monopolize. Ang Maynilad and Manila Water, yung pagsusupply ng tubig, hindi kaya yan ng mga maliliit na player. So, sila yung nakapagtayo nito and kahit 5-5 lang kita niyan, araw-araw at milyon, uh, mapakalaki pa rin ang kanilang kikitain. No? Yan ang idea ng capitalism. No? Uh, they needed to create enormous corporations that could monopolize, the word is monopolize, the entire industry. So yan, just one supplier, no competition, monopolist controls price, very hard to enter the market. That's monopoly. Many companies controlled all aspects of the production cycle for their industry, from the raw materials to the production to the stores in which they were sold. These companies were able to use their wealth to buy out or stifle any competition. Uh, history ng, ng inasal na takeover na siya ng uh, Jollibee kasi sabi ni Jollibee malakas si mga inasal ha at tatalo na yata tayo binili siya uh, in acquire so ngayon mapakalaki na ni Jollibee no? we have Dunkin Donuts Hard Cafe etc Chow King you know? and also San Miguel Corporation you know? uh, from the farm to the plate meron siyang negosyo Let's go now to socialism. No? Socialism versus capitalism. Sabi rito, it's been, ito yung karikature, it's been a pleasure doing business with you. Sabi ng capitalism. Socialism says, it's been a pleasure doing this business with you, si government. Ang uh, may pakialam sa lahat, nakikialam lahat. Uh, yan yung socialism. At uh, ngayon, kung titingnan mo, ang countries eh, kukunti na yung bansa na pure capitalism or pure socialism or pure na communism. Mix-mix na sila. Um, like in uh, in China, it's a form of socialism din kasi gobyero nagpapatakbo. Pero meron din naman mga individual who are engaged in uh, businesses like si yung nagbumaksak na Evergrande. No? Ayan. Uh, Tsaka yung isang mayaman, si Alibaba. Ayan. 
But let about socialism as a pure, pure. No? Hindi yung, kasi mga countries ngayon nag, ano na eh, mix-mix na sila. No? Socialism is an economic system in which there there is government ownership, often referred to as state run of goods and their production with an impetus to share work and wealth equally among the members of a society. Under socialism, everything that people produce, including services, is considered a social output. So, pinapatakbo ng gobyerno, sinishare. Ang isang maganda na hindi naman sila tinatawag na socialism kasi ang kanilang uh, leader doon, ang pinakamataas is si Sultan, ang Brunei. Pero ang ginagawa nila, lahat ng kinikita nila, specifically sa oil, ay nadidistribute sa social uh, obligation ng government, free, free education, free, almost free everything doon. Uh, parts wala kang babayaran. No? Hospitalization free din. Dubai is uh, doing the same thing. You know? May mga ganyang countries na uh, although hindi socialist sila, pero yung kanilang way of giving back to the people ay uh, related sa, sa, sa state. No? So, everyone who contributes to the production of good or to providing a service is entitled to a share of any benefits that come from its sale or use. To make sure all members of society get their fair share, governments must be able to control property, production, and distribution. This is a uh, socialism kasi this is an early um, idea, no? Kasi nga, mahihirap ang mga tao, ang karamihan, at kukunti naman yung mayayaman. Ang uh, idea is whatever na kinikita ng country to the government ay magkaroon ng share ang lahat ng tao, especially sa mahihirap. Kaya nga, social. Eh. Socialism, no? Free housing, free ang kuryente, no? ano pa mga free. Uh, yan. Yan ang, uh, eh, meron pa nga, free ang gasolina. No? Kung hindi man, subsidized. Mababa lang ang binabayaran nila. So maganda ang layo ng socialism para mabenefit yung nasa lower rank of the society. Pag pinag-kumpara uh, mo ang dalawa, capitalism and socialism, The focus in socialism is on benefiting society, whereas capitalism seeks to benefit the individual. Socialists claim that a capitalistic economy leads to inequality. Sabi niya, hindi. Ang, so, ang uh, capitalistic, eh, yayaman ang mayayaman na. Lalo maghihirap ang um, mga mahihirap, sabi niya, mga socialists. With unfair distribution of wealth and individuals who use their power at the expense of society. Whereas, socialism strives ideally to control the economy to avoid the problems inherent in capitalism. So, uh, kumbaga, ma masishare. Pero sa totoong buhay, uh, marami rin mga loopholes dyan. Marami pa rin mga nagre-reklamo. Either way, either capitalism or socialism. And difference is capitalism is an economic system where the means of production are owned by private, yung isa naman owned by the state or public or the government. Companies live by profit motive. Sa capitalism, sa socialism, everyone works for wealth that is in turn distributed to everyone. Uh, capitalism, the government's job, it is the government's job by enforcing laws and regulation to make sure there is level playing field. Pantay dapat ang pagninegosyo. Whereas, uh, socialism, the government decides how wealth is distributed among people. They provide for the people. Socialism views. Uh, with socialism, there are diverging views on the extent to which the economy should be controlled. One extreme believes that all but most personal items are public property. Other socialists believe only essential services. O magka magkakaiba pa rin ang paniniwala ang socialism, sabi niya. Uh, Binong isa, mga extreme, uh, lahat, pag-aari yan ng gobyerno. It's a public property. 
Yung isa naman, sabi niya, hindi. Yung mga ano lang, healthcare, education, utilities, such as electrical power, telecommunications, sewage need direct control. Kaya ang <clears throat> capitalism, may haro din socialism eh. Like dito sa Pilipinas, hawak pa rin ang government ang pagpapatakbo ng power industry. No? Uh, pero noong dati, pati yung Maynila at saka Nawasa, sa government yan, uh, pati mga banko, kaya binenta na ng gobyerno. Kasi nga, uh, we're going towards more on the idea sa capitalism na dapat yan ay sa private. No? Under this form of socialism, even the farms, small shops, and businesses can be privately owned but are subject to government regulations. No? So these are the countries na communist. Huh? China, Laos, Cuba, North Korea, and Vietnam. They have the power to tell all businesses what to do, or what to produce, how much to produce, and what to charge for it. Vietnam, kasi nga sila ay socialist and communist, same time, napakalaki ng kanilang export ngayon at mabilis silang nakabawi. Kasi isa lang ang nasusunod. China, the same thing. Sa Pilipinas, maraming nasusunod. Kanya-kanya. Kaya may isang maganda rin ang socialism. Eh, no? uh, if we are looking at the one direction. Pero siyempre, maraming issues yan. Hindi naman yun lang ang tinitingnan natin. Like, uh, ibabanggam sa freedom. Marami kasing bawal-bawal sa kanila. Eh, yung mga Pilipino naman, hindi pwedeng pagbawalan. No? Talagang, talagang gagawin at gagawin. So, magkakaroon ng social unrest kapag uh, binago mong system. No? At marami rin naman mga naghahamo na palitan na natin ang sistema ng Pilipinas. So, Uh, yan yung mga National Democratic Front sa lumaban na nagkaroon ng sariling armas sa Mindanao naman ay hihiwalay na sila at tayo ng sariling arming MNLF, BIFF yan mga ganyan-ganyan no? so uh, these are the these are the nature of the, the societies because of challenges in their economics or economies several of these communist countries have made or have moved from central planning to letting market forces help determine many production and pricing decisions. So, uh, itong mga bansang China, Vietnam, hindi na sila pure socialism. They somehow embrace the idea of market or capitalism. So, they now coin the word market socialism. No? At yan na yung kanilang pinapractice and they, they believe uh, this is uh, more beneficial in uh, terms of the globalization no? yung market socialism you need to open your market you need you need no, you need uh, uh, the foreign businesses to enter your country and operate no? so yan ang nangyari sa kanila ngayon and uh, some of these countries tend to grow so that ends my uh, lecture for today at uh, mas mahaba ang pinag-usapan natin tungkol sa Uh, market socialism uh, in terms of problem ng society yan, mga inequality, yan ang mga word dyan no? hindi pantay-pantay tapos makikita pa yung health problems, education uh, what else peace and order <clears throat> traffic uh, you can uh, name so many things by just looking at our country especially Metro Manila kaya nga tayo ngayon uh, we're looking at the projects Duterte, build, build, build kasi isa sa mga nakikita nila ang solusyon para ma-decongest or matanggal ang bara dyan sa Metro Manila is to develop the nearby uh, provinces like Calabarzon so marami ng mga, mga malalapat na kalsadang ginagawa ngayon uh, hanggang Bicol, nire-revive nila yung trend at saka maraming mga kalsada ngayon na hindi na dumadaan doon sa towns, ano, town proper. Meron na mga tinatawag na diversion para mapabilis ang biyahe because roads, connectivity, transportation uh, leads to development no? and leads to migration of people uh, lilipat doon. Madidi-congest ang Metro Manila. But the same thing will happen 
magiging magnet siya noong mga tao na nasa rural area. Uh, then the cycle repeats itself, magka-create ng problem. Uh, tatayo na siyempre ni SM, no? lalo magka-traffic. Pagka may SM, susunod na roon ng mga subdivision, kakainin ang mga productive lands. No? Mawawala na, madidisplace na naman si farmer. And then, magtatayo ng industrial estate. So, magkakatrabaho mga tao, magkakaroon ng sweldo, pambili sa SM. So, si SM ngayon, uh, yayaman uli. Pero yung mga supplier ni SM, na mga noodles, etc., ay lalakas ang benta, magtatayo ulit sila ng mga bagong factories saan pupunta doon sa mga bagong bukas na lugar uh, na hindi pa crowded at ang kanilang kukuhaning mga laborer again are the people there. So magkakaroon ng trabaho, makakabili ulit sa SM, supplier ng SM, lalaki ulit at yan yung tinatawag nating um, growth. No? Pero nakikita nyo nasa service sector ang growth nasa product production sa services uh, industry pero hindi ang agriculture eh yun nga ang naiiwanan yun ang masakit the two things na naggugro ang uh, service at saka industry but not agriculture so next time we'll be looking at uh, the different types ng branches ng agriculture what is agriculture at uh, ito ay para sa inyo, para malaman nyo ang inyong direksyon. Knowing the background. Knowing the background, saan ba kayo pupunta? Saan ba pupunta ang Pilipinas at ang mundo when it terms sa uh, <coughs> um, agriculture? So, it's almost 9.30 and uh, I hope you learned something today. So, thank you very much for listening and uh, I will be posting again the lecture for today. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, po, sir. Thank you, po. Bye, goodbye everybody. Uh, malakas na ulan dito. Uh, hindi na rin kayo parinig ng...